Live from ABC News 4 in Charleston, this is Good Morning Charleston. Hey, good morning, folks. Thank you for joining us on this Wednesday morning. So, hey, we're almost halfway through the week. I guess you got to get to lunchtime technically, uh, but still a very mild, muggy morning. Look at that 81 degrees. I mean, it was I walked outside and went, wow. Not to mention, uh, we're talking about frogs yesterday and during Low Country Live, and they were very loud this morning, too. So, uh, some animals certainly enjoying it, but look at this. Double sevens, Georgetown Monks Corner, 79, Somerville, 81, also in Beaufort. Dew points are in the mid to upper 70s, so there certainly is more humidity out there. And uh, satellite radar, relatively calm right now. You do see some clouds into Georgia, so we'll have... Kind of mixed cloud cover once again, but Futurecast is hinting that with that humidity, we will get some storms firing up later on this afternoon. Now, questions, of course, go, will they hit your house? Well, this model's showing them more into Colleton County. Other model we'll show you here coming up, a little bit different story, and we'll have those details, but in general, expect a chance of afternoon storms. Like I said, we'll have the full Futurecast and your extended forecast coming up. Good morning, Charleston. I'm Tessa Spencer. Thank you for joining us. There's been another shakeup within the Charleston County School District. CCSD confirmed yesterday that Chief of Staff Erica Taylor is no longer working for the district. We're told the position was eliminated. Taylor had been with the district for nearly 10 years, serving in a strategy and communications role before becoming chief of staff. Now, this comes after CCSD announced major changes last week. That included the resignation of chief academic officer Carolyn Belcher, and it has not been long since the interim title was removed for Superintendent Don Kennedy. He's now serving in that role until a permanent hire is completed. CCSD board member Courtney Waters spoke to ABC News for on the matter. It's a lot of change when we're getting ready to hire a new superintendent very shortly. And so I don't think that the board should be standing for this. I don't think we should be condoning this. And I do think we need to do something about it. A CCSD spokesperson told us, quote, as Superintendent Kennedy reorganizes the district to achieve the goal of all students reading on grade level by fifth grade in 2027, some employees will be moved and some positions will be changed to accomplish that goal. A new school in Dorchester County is set to open at the start of the school year. DD2 officials say East Edisto Middle will be ready for the first day of classes, which is August 15th. A spokesperson said furniture was actually being moved in yesterday. The school will hold approximately 1,000 students and share a campus with Beach Hill Elementary. This will be the district's seventh middle school. Well, traffic is a constant problem in the low country, and now SCDOT is hoping to address it before it gets even worse. And last night, DOT engineers hosted a public information meeting outlining alternative improvements for the Long Point Road interchange on I-526. Our Floriana Boardman was at that meeting and explains why this project is so important. Trucks are among the major vehicles that travel along Long Point Road every day. According to SCDOT, the number of trucks heading in and out of the port is expected to jump by 125 percent. People are, have a lot of concerns over the operational conflicts between port-related traffic and local traffic, and we'd really like to see us do improvements that help provide some separation between you know, the heavy truck traffic and the local traffic. Residents and business owners along the corridor say they're eager to see improvements moving forward. Two of the six proposed alternatives include building new port access ramps. It's an idea some residents like. Because that would mean the trucks wouldn't be competing with the normal Long Point Road exit where most of the residential is going. Robin Moore owns a business off of Long Point Road. She sees the same issues. Sometimes I can't even make a left turn going back into Mount Pleasant because there's so many trucks. So I have to go out and make a U-turn and go back. For now, she isn't sure if she wants to see a new ramp. That's not one of my favorites. I mean, I think it would be good to have uh, just an individual road for the port, but it seems like it takes up a lot of land. 
Last night, law enforcement agencies around the low country hosted parties as part of National Night Out. Here's a look at that gathering that took place at North Goose Creek Boulevard. The goal is uh, the goal, excuse me, is for officers to get to know the people in their communities while having some fun. Of course, people enjoyed canine demonstrations, fire truck displays, music, um, the forever fun dunk tank uh, and even gift bags for the kids. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't come in contact with us unless they need us for an emergency, for a horrible situation. So it's events like this that allow the community to see us in a different light, to realize that we are people too, and we're here, we're approachable, we're able to be talked to, and we're here for the citizens of Goose Creek. I love that jam they're playing in the background. The annual event looks to strengthen the relationships between the police and the people they protect. Now to a deadly discovery in Somerville. 66-year-old Randy Moore is charged with abuse or neglect of a vulnerable adult resulting in death. Police say a man in Moore's care was living in poor conditions at a home on Lily Place. That man was found dead when officers were called about CPR in progress July 24th. The name of that man who died has not been released. Moore was booked into the Dorchester County Jail. In Dorchester County, a man is facing charges after cashing in stolen scratch-off tickets. According to SLED, John Johnson of Harleyville received $185 from a gas station after passing four stolen lottery tickets. Johnson is charged with four counts of intent to defraud the lottery and was given a 10,000 bond for each charge. He's already facing charges in the murder of a man near St. George back in December. Johnson was released last Thursday on a $250,000 bond. How South Carolina carries out the death penalty is being challenged in court. Four death row inmates are suing the state. What plays out in a Columbia courtroom this week just might determine the future of the death penalty in the Palmetto State. Kelsey Sanchez was there for day two of the trial and breaks down the details. It is without question that the death penalty is not Attorneys for four death row inmates suing the state are arguing the opposite at the Richland County Courthouse. They say the electric chair and firing squad are cruel and unusual punishment. There is no other state that forces a choice between these two methods. The law on that is it does not guarantee a payment staff. On Tuesday, three people taking the stand. The Department of Corrections Director Brian Sterling, the Director of Security at the department, and an expert witness of biological physics who touched on protocols for the electric chair and firing squad and the effects electricity has on the human body. The focus, however, was mostly on the electric chair. Autopsy reports and photos from people who have been executed were also presented. The case involves death row inmates Freddie Owens, Brad Sigmund, Richard Moore, and Gary DuBose. Last year, Governor Henry McMaster signed a law giving prisoners the option to choose between the chair or firing squad. Moore and Sigmund were set to be the first executed in South Carolina since the state put a 10-year pause after the supply of lethal injection drugs expired in 2013. The last person to be executed in South Carolina was in 2011. Right now, there are 34 inmates on death row in South Carolina. Coming up, 48 states now reporting confirmed cases of monkeypox, the pressure that's on the White House to declare a national public emergency. Lunchflation hitting American workers. I'm Angela Brown in Washington, D.C. Why new numbers could have you skipping that taco. Sports, sponsored by Somerville Ford. Oh, welcome back at Wofford. Good morning. I'm Natalie Spala. Yesterday marked day two of week two for Panthers training camp and the steady return of cornerback J.C. Horn. He was activated off the pup list on Monday. Now we heard from the former South Carolina Gamecock for the first time Tuesday saying he will continue his day by day comeback schedule. Horn suffered a season ending injury after starting in three games during his rookie campaign last year and experienced some soreness last week. He says as much as it's pained him to sit out this long, he's working to take it slow so he'll be ready come week one. When you come back, come back off a broken foot, you're going to deal with, you know, some soreness. And as you know, something I've been dealing with. Um, and if you talk to anybody with a broken foot, they're going to tell you that's, that's what, you, what they gen generally deal with. So I wasn't too concerned. You know, I was just taking the advice of the training staff and, you know, taking it slow. I would say the biggest thing I took away from it was just being patient because, you know, that's all you can do. When you have an injury like that, as much as you want to be out there playing, 
much as you want to practice, can't. JC last year was a physical presence, was uh, explosive, aggressive, you know, didn't back down from anybody. We missed him when he was gone. Uh, he, he has a chance, I think, to be a really special player. Now, plenty of fans on hand cheering Horn on Tuesday. Perhaps most notable, South Carolina women's basketball star Bree Beal, who is dating Horn. Horn was on hand to watch Beal and the Lady Gamecocks win their national title this past season. He says it motivates him even more. Getting insight on how they practice, you know, how hard they go, how hard Coach Staley, you know, is on them. And then seeing the confetti drop and everybody's expressions and everybody happy. It's an experience, you know, every athlete wants to experience. So this is my last shot at it. So I hope I can get a Super Bowl. Busy day in the world of baseball as the trade deadline came to a close Tuesday afternoon. For starters, Charleston resident and former Gamecock Jordan Montgomery, no longer a Yankee after being traded to the Cardinals, and Gamecock great Whit Merrifield is now heading north to Toronto. Meantime, the Braves acquired pitcher Vicel Iglesias from the Angels in exchange for pitchers Jesse Chavez and Tucker Davidson. On the field, it was a pretty good day to be a Brave. Spencer Strider, 13 strikeouts. Bats were also in full force against the Phillies. Atlanta found themselves down 3-1 to one early, but it wasn't long. They took the lead 5-1 with this slide from Eddie Rosario off a bad pitch. And then things just got ugly for Philadelphia. 13-1, your final score. Let's talk Bulldog football ahead of the first day of practice. The Citadel projected to end the 2022 season towards the bottom, if not at the bottom of the SoCon. Head coach Brent Thompson enters year seven and has some decisions to make sooner rather than later. It remains to be seen who will replace quarterback Jalen Adams. That's a position Thompson says is wide open. Jalen departed right at the beginning of spring football there, so uh, we had thrown him out in there and understands the offense, worked really, really hard this summertime. He's got himself in really good shape. Uh, I, I think he can be the guy. Uh, I know he's tough enough to be the guy. It's just going to be a matter of whether he can beat out some of the other guys that are there. Yeah, yeah, there's help. some other options in there. You know, Grayson Underwood's another option in there. We may have some other guys that can, yep. that can get into that spot. Uh, but it is wide open right now. We're, we're, we're going to test it out to see what's going to be our, our best. Now the Citadel start practice later on this morning. Our Scott Eisberg will be there bright and early and have more on this team during sports at 6 o'clock tonight. That'll do it for sports for now. Have a great day, everyone. Now on Good Morning Charleston, we're working for you with a storm tracker update. Hey folks, so today we are finally starting to see a little bit of a change. It's been pretty dry the past couple days and yeah, we've had a few spotty showers here and there and some of you have had a couple downpours, but so a lot of folks that are looking at their grass going, where's the rain? We need it. Uh, August is typically one of the wetter months of the year. In fact, it is the wettest month on average here in Charleston. Uh, and we're going to start to see that trend pick up. Now you saw right now it's a very warm morning and uh, generally speaking 90s are going to stick around though we're talking more low 90s instead of mid 90s courtesy of those afternoon and evening thunderstorms it's still going to be pretty warm and muggy out there that ocean temperature of course making a big difference but we're in the upper 70s right now 80 degrees charleston dew points in the mid to upper 70s and that is the big difference is once you start to get over that 75 mark nothing special about it other than that's when us as humans <laughs> really start to notice it. So yeah, you step outside. It's a bit of a wall for you, but satellite radar, generally speaking, showing a lot of clear skies across South Carolina clouds into Georgia, a couple showers just outside Atlanta. Uh, for us, though, we'll start to see those later on this afternoon, but 94 Charleston, Somerville, 93 Monk's Corner, uh, upper 80s for the immediate coastline. That heat index because the humidity is higher is actually going to be similar to yesterday, even though temperatures will be just a tad cooler. But there are those afternoon storms. So here's one o'clock. The breeze making inroads fairly quickly. So if this plays out, I mean, even by four o'clock, yeah, maybe Monk's Corner, Somerville seeing a few showers, but downtown Mount Pleasant, you guys will be done by this afternoon and uh, overnight. Not looking too impressive, though, maybe a little something tomorrow morning. So uh, crossing fingers that we do get some rain. The afternoon cool down always welcome. But then also, of course, that'll help green up the grass. Uh, speaking of this evening, 75, 77, maybe a stray shower or two. And uh, looking at uh, rain chances, again, they kind of bounce around a little bit. But notice how they pick up in the weekend. Yeah, especially Sunday, I say, is going to be an umbrella day. So maybe grab something before heading out to services. Or if you're going to do Sunday brunch with the friends, uh, grab that umbrella as well. The tropics still quiet. Again, it's been unusually quiet for July and early August. Not complaining. 
but we might start to see that change here in about a week, week and a half. We'll have to kind of see if that trend holds, but there's the extended day. Again, Sunday probably looking the wettest and coolest in the next seven days. Well, need a ride? Call an Uber. Say, craving your favorite pizza from that place on the corner? Uber Eats. Need groceries delivered? You can also do that through Uber. And it's easy to see why the ride share and food delivery company is really killing it right now. Even with higher gas prices and soaring inflation, Uber isn't slowing down on its rebound from the worst days of the pandemic. The company says the number of people using the app is at an all time high. The British energy giant reported its biggest quarterly profit in nearly 15 years, raking in $8.4 billion between April and June. This follows similar profit peaks from other oil giants. President Biden often blasts big oil for holding up production. Why aren't they drilling? Because they make more money not producing more oil. The price goes up, number one. And number two, the reason they're not drilling is they're buying back their own stock but Big Oil says there's a good reason for holding back, namely concerns about future supply. Experts believe rules, regulations and laws could soon put a clamp on demand, leaving energy companies with too much supply. They want assurances that prices will not crater in a few days, weeks and months. While employees are returning to the office, are they're facing sticker shock from salads to your favorite wrap, lunch is costing more. Angela Brown has the numbers and breaks down the cost hike. The term is called lunchflation. Overall, the average cost of some of your favorite lunchtime foods has gone up 7%, and that could be on the low end. It's costing you more to drive to work and really just be at work. It seems like you can't really get a lunch for 10 bucks anymore, uh, whereas a couple of years ago, um, that was pretty easy. It's no secret, food is more expensive. Now researchers from Square, a payment processor, are putting numbers on it, tracking how much more you are paying for popular lunch foods. Sandwiches up 14%, tacos jumping by 12%, salads 11% more. Mark Hamrick, bank rate. As people have returned to work to the extent that they've gone back to the office, they may have suffered some sticker shock when they see that the price of a salad or a sandwich at a local business is higher than it was before. The financial pain goes both ways. Restaurants are paying more for food and ingredients. Alex Biggers, works at a bakery. I make bread, right? So like we've had a lot of issue getting honey, getting packaged yeast, getting like chocolate chips or whatever. Overall, the cost of food is up 10.4% from last year. Dining out, up nearly 8%. Lunchflation coupled with gasflation is driving up frustration, but Bigger says don't take it out on your server. It's not the fault of the workers that you are talking to and to blow up at them or rather to get frustrated with them is just annoying people that have come there to do their job to help you get what you need throughout the day. The pandemic really crippled the restaurant industry. There was a labor shortage. People quit their jobs. Other people were laid off. Supply chain issues drove up the cost of food and ingredients, and some of those costs were passed on to you. Reporting in Washington, D.C., I'm Angela Brown. Well, new research shows catching shingles may increase your risk of Alzheimer's disease. Scientists say the infection can set off a chain reaction in the brain that leads to plaque and inflammation. That's the case if the person has the herpes simplex 1 virus that's known for causing cold sores. The shingles virus awakens the dormant virus and triggers a rapid buildup of harmful proteins. The researchers say protecting against shingles can therefore also provide some protection against Alzheimer's. While well, President Biden appointed an official Tuesday to oversee the nation's monkeypox response as three states now declare a state of emergency. Here in South Carolina, the number of reported cases has risen to 21. ABC's Alexis Christophorus has the latest. With cases of monkeypox rising across the country, President Biden today appointing an official team to oversee the nation's response, naming FEMA official Robert Fenton as the White House monkeypox coordinator and the CDC's Dr. Dimitri Daskalakis as his deputy. This is California and Illinois join New York in declaring a monkeypox state of emergency. There are now over 5,800 confirmed cases of monkeypox in the U.S., nearly a quarter of those in New York City. 
city, but so far, no reported deaths. Long lines like this one at a San Francisco hospital becoming more common as vaccine supply fails to keep up with demand. It's horrible. The rollout of the vaccines throughout this nation is it's absolutely horrible. And pressure growing on the White House to declare a national health emergency. We're ready to go. We just need the vaccine. Chicago resident Kyle Benter is in the final recovery stage, waiting for his lesions to fully heal after contracting monkeypox in mid-July. It was akin to what I would probably consider to be like medieval torture because it was so long, it was unending. So far, infections have been mainly among men who have sex with other men, but experts stress the outbreak could affect anyone. At least four children in the U.S. have now tested positive for the virus. Once uh, symptoms start, patients develop that viral syndrome, so the fever, the, the increased lymph nodes, the muscle aches, then the rash starts, and that rash can last for anywhere from two to four weeks. Experts say monkeypox is contagious from the start of symptoms until the absence of a rash. They recommend avoiding close skin-to-skin -skin contact, not sharing objects with an infected person, and practicing good hand hygiene. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. While the White House continues to emphasize there is no change in U.S. policy as House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visits Taiwan. China claims Taiwan as its territory and has repeatedly threatened retaliation over such a visit. The U.S. is committed to the one China policy, but has a strong unofficial relationship with Taiwan. There are concerns in the Biden administration about China's response. Um, we would again remind uh, uh, leaders uh, in Beijing that there's nothing unprecedented about this trip. I, I heard a Chinese spokesman uh, earlier today was saying that it violates their sovereignty. There's no violation of sovereignty. Pelosi is the highest ranking American official in 25 years to visit the island. Soon after her arrival in Taiwan, Chinese warplanes flew close to the median line of the Taiwan Strait. While well, racetrack corgis are as quick as they are cute, coming up, a peek at the fan favorite corgi races at Canterbury Park. ABC News 4 in Charleston. This is Good Morning Charleston. Good morning, Charleston. I am Alyssa Holmes. And I'm Melanie Orleans. Thank you for starting your day with us. Storm Tracker meteorologist Chris Nesman is here with our first check of the weather. And Chris, I'm glad to be on the team officially. I was going to say, yeah. first off, before we get to the weather, <laughs> welcome. Thank Mel. you. Hello, we're Thank so you. excited to have you here. Thank yeah. you. I'm happy to be here uh, and um, soaking in the humidity, I should say. <laughs> Whether you want to or not, <laughs> right. that is kind of Bathing in it. That's yes. the first thing yes. people usually no. notice. Well, and I'll tell you what, Mel, the fact that you guys moved here late July means you're kind of doing trial by fire, but it gets better from here. Yeah, it, well, just, well, after I'll August. I'll take your word for it. After August, we'll just say that. So you got to get through late July through August. Of course, everyone, that's kind of when you start going, wait, why do I live here? It's the one time of year where you might maybe a little bit think that, but it will eventually get better uh, because, again, our average temperatures have started to tick down. Now, it's a slow process, but hey, they're making their way the right direction. 81 degrees, currently Mount Pleasant, so it is a very muggy start. 80 Charleston, 79 Somerville, 77 Monk's Corner, dew points, and that's the big factor. They're over that 75 mark, so you kind of just feel it when you walk outside. Overall, though, not seeing a lot in the way of satellite radar, uh, but one difference compared to yesterday, the sea breeze actually looks like it's going to kick up some storms. So 94 this afternoon, but those afternoon thunderstorms might bring some relief. We'll take a look at that on Futurecast coming up. But first, let's get an update on our roads with our trooper Bob. Hey, Bob, good morning and happy Wednesday to you. Hey, good morning. Happy Wednesday to you too, Alyssa and uh, Mel. Welcome to the morning show. Happy to have you here and good morning, everyone. Let's go right to the roadway. Just turned off of 61 onto uh, Beast Ferry Road. If you're making your way out from Somerville down towards 61 uh, into the city, you're not gonna have any issues or out to uh, Main Road, Kiowa, Seabrook Island, as you can see right in front of me, very, uh, actually no traffic on this side of town. Interstates are looking good, 26, 5, 26. Areas of construction that are wrapping up right now, they're expected to be out of the roadway here as we speak in uh, just a couple minutes. That's gonna be 194 mile marker right around Jedburgh and also the eastbound side of 26 right near Ashley Phosphate. This ABC News 4 traffic tracker update was sponsored by Mr. Sparky, America's on-time electrician. 
It's a job where every second matters, but officials with Charleston County say there's a critical need for dispatchers. For more, we send it over to our Sean Mahoney, who jo joins us live outside of the 911 call center in North Charleston. Good morning, Sean. How urgent of a situation has this shortage created? Hey, good morning, Mel. First off, glad to have you joining us on Good Morning Charleston. You're going to be a great addition to this team. But you guys might be noticing that I'm talking to you guys through a different sort of microphone today. This type of headset is what workers in the call center right behind me put on every day to be on the front lines of some of those calls with people in their most dire time of need. But with vacancies of 47 open slots here at this call center, well, these workers, they have to put on this headset set uh, a little bit longer than they usually would and officials with the call center say that that could affect response times to the citizens here in Charleston County. Now uh, approximately three quarters of calls according to Charleston County officials are answered in 15 seconds or less. Now the rest they may get put on hold until the operator is available. Now this is because the call center currently only has enough staff to fill the minimum number of, of needed uh, call telecommunicators for each shift. Now it's been so bad, many employees have to work 12 and a half hour shifts. And what that does, employees say it creates burnout and burns through taxpayers' wallets. We approximately, our department used um, approximately $2 million worth of overtime, just overtime last year in 2021 because of our staffing. Um, so that overtime not only taxes the citizens, but it also taxes our staff, um, you know, not having that out of work time um, to get their get their life straight and all that stuff, spend time with family. Now, this time last year, the call center had 83 people working these phone lines. Now they only have 70 employees and to put it in perspective, they need 117 to be at full staff. So what is the county doing to try and change that? We'll come up in a half hour. We'll tell you about a new initiative by the county to try to get more people to walk through those doors. But for now, Mel, Alyssa, I'll send it back to you guys. All right, Sean, thank you. And officials with Charleston County say the call center received almost 900,000 calls just last year. Our traffic is a constant problem in the low country. Now the SEDOT is hoping to address it before it gets even worse. DOT engineers hosted a public information meeting outlining alternative improvements for the Long Point Road interchange on I-526. Now two of the six proposed alternatives include building new port access ramps. Now, the goal of this proposal is to divert trucks away from the existing Long Point Road exit. Now this is an issue that residents worry about. Make a left turn going back into Mount Pleasant because there's so many trucks. So I have to go out and make a U-turn and go back. Now, despite this issue, Morris did say that she isn't sold on the idea of a new ramp quite yet. SEDOT will have more public comment in December once they have a preferred alternative. Now, construction could begin by 2024. 506 right now. Another shakeup within the Charleston County School District. A spokesman confirms Chief of Staff Erica Taylor is no longer working for the district. We're told the position was eliminated. Taylor had been with the district for nearly 10 years, serving in a strategy and communications role before becoming Chief of Staff. This comes after CCSD announced major changes last week, including the resignation of Chief Academic Officer Carolyn Belcher. The interim title was removed for Superintendent Don Kennedy. He's now serving in that role until a permanent hire is made. CCSD board member Courtney Waters spoke to ABC News 4 about this. It's a lot of change when we're getting ready to hire a new superintendent very shortly. And so I don't think that the board should be standing for this. I don't think we should be condoning this. And I do think we need to do something about it. A CCSD spokesperson told us, quote, as superintendent, Kennedy reorganizes the district to achieve the goal of all students reading on grade level by fifth grade in 2027. Some employees will be moved and some positions will be changed to accomplish that goal. Now, what plays out in the Richland County Courthouse in Columbia this week just might determine the future of the death penalty in the Palmetto State. 
Attorneys for the four death row inmates suing the state are arguing that the death penalty is not constitutional and the conditions of execution in South Carolina are cruel. Right now, those sentenced to death in South Carolina have the option between the electric chair or a firing squad. Now, there are currently 34 inmates on death row in South Carolina. Okay, we are looking at an increase in rain chances. We'll have the latest in your full weather forecast coming up. A big effort to try and contain the spread of the monkeypox virus. I'm Liz Bonus with the new monkeypox response team expected to do. It is just ahead. the show since the top of the hour. You have seen a new face yeah. on the set today. Today is the first day for Mel Orleans. She will be the new co-anchor on Good Morning Charleston. Joining us, if you can't tell, we are excited to finally Ecstatic. have a full team. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a while. So, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to work with the both of y'all. You guys have been so welcoming and just, you know, people I've met so far being in Charleston have been so welcoming. I'm originally from Virginia and I'm finally back in the south yeah. after what seems like way too long uh, 11 <laughs> years it's been so i'm so happy to be back in the south um and yeah working with y'all so okay. tell well, us welcome. about yourself we're looking at some pictures yeah. of you obviously so beautiful the, wedding dress thank here. you so these are my my parents well these aren't my parents these are my um my best friends from uh from high school and my mom um and that's my sister-in-law we recently did a trip to big sur in uh, California, and there's my dog Sue. Aww. And she, like her mom, is a big Florida State fan. I went to FSU, but here's proof. That's my uh, one of my good friends. She had a Clemson sweatshirt on, Ooh. so I can get along with Clemson friends. Ah, fans, that's uh, which is good because I mean, South it Carolina. Might, it might be good, but I. I uh, you're and you went to, to USC. USC, yeah. So I mean, this is perfect. <laughs> we need the rivalry here. A friendly rivalry, yeah, right? Yeah, it's always friendly. <laughs> so but yeah, we're so excited to have you thank here. Thank you so much. Yeah, just uh, and I'll tell you. So okay, so tell folks a little bit about. So you're back in the south. Yep. But kind of like a lot in this business, you've moved around. It's I, the nature of the industry. So <laughs> yes. where have you been you know, before this? So I started, you know, I started off working in Tallahassee, uh, where I went to school at Florida State, and then I moved to North Dakota. So oh, that wow. was a huge <laughs> change to go from Tallahassee to North Dakota. And I worked there as an anchor and reporter for a couple years, went to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, was a morning anchor there. And then most recently, I was in Buffalo, New York as a morning anchor. So um, I have been uh, high, uh, you know, very, very north. So I'm happy to be back with some, some nice sunny weather. Say. Yeah. Well, we appreciate the fact that you're here, <laughs> that you're up, yeah. and that we haven't scared you off yet. Right. No, not yet. Not so. yet. We'll be back tomorrow. The, the, yeah, of course. <laughs> I was going to say the week is young, the day is young, but no, I'm so happy to be here. And, um, and yeah, very we're going to cool. have a good time. <laughs> we are. We are. Especially if you like to talk food, which... So Say far, no more. We, so far, it's been good. It's so yeah. amazing. We talk food all the time. <laughs> anyway, all right. Well, Mel, you probably now, noticed. On Good Morning Charleston, we're working for you with a storm tracker update. Gotta let Mrs. Voice get her part in. But Mel, you probably noticed that humidity when you first got here. Oh. Very much so. <laughs> yes. Uh, eventually, it, it, I'll tell you, it's good for the skin, but certainly makes it rough as far as if you want to like not sweat through your clothes within five minutes. But hey, that's August for you. And I'll tell you what, today is going to be a muggy day because we're starting out real muggy already. Look at this, 82 degrees in Mount Pleasant. So if you're training for any kind of race or something this morning, make sure you take an extra glass of water before you dr uh, drink one before you head out because you're going to be sweating a lot today. And those 90s, unfortunately, are sticking around. Now, if there is some relief, it's we have some afternoon storm chances are starting to pick up. So maybe Mother Nature providing her all natural air conditioning as far as bringing things a bit better for us. But still this morning, 80 Charleston, 77 Georgetown, 79 Somerville, dew points all in the mid to upper 70s. So it really is quite muggy there. And uh, satellite radar just showing a few thin clouds kind of creeping in from Georgia. They're a little thicker out there, but in general, not too bad. Most of the rain staying offshore in Georgia or a little bit outside of Atlanta. So quiet for now, but we do anticipate those storms firing up this afternoon. So you saw low 90s and here we go. Future cast quite aggressive with our afternoon storm chances. We go through the day. They actually move inland fairly quickly today. So your afternoon evening commute. Sometimes we're worried about storms causing extra accidents. 
Probably not going to see that today, so there's some good stuff. And then tomorrow, maybe a few showers in the morning, and then we do expect to repeat in the afternoon. So temperatures tonight in the mid to upper 70s, and then look at those rain chances. They're low-ish for a few days but they ramp up on the weekend. We'll take a look at that here coming up in just a bit, but let's get an update on those roads with our trooper Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, Chris, there's a live look at Ashley River Road. If you're heading into uh, downtown, no delays on interstates. They did wrap up that construction around the 194 Jedburgh and also uh, right there before Ashley Phosphate. So they are out of the roadway. 526 looks good from Mount Pleasant over towards West Ashley and vice versa. No delays. Everything's right at interstate speeds. And some good news, no incidents or wrecks to tell you about. And as Bob mentioned, uh, those uh, roads are pretty clear, so the drive time's all sitting pretty at or below that 20 minute mark. Somerville to downtown, a smooth and beautiful green 19 minutes. This ABC News 4 traffic tracker update was sponsored by Mr. Sparky, America's on time electrician. 516 right now, the White House is stepping up efforts today to stop the spread of the monkeypox virus. Uh, they've just launched a monkeypox, monkeypox response team to provide more resources nationwide. Our medical reporter Liz Bonus explains what that means. Hey there, hello to you. This team, all in effort to try and curb this outbreak. Monkeypox hitting nearly 6,000 cases in the U.S. so far and is now in 48 states, including Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico. The same disaster relief workers for everything from bad weather to coronavirus now taking on monkeypox. The head guy to stop the spread, Robert Fenton, an administrator with the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA as it's known. The CDC's head of HIV prevention also helping in the response. Here's why. Currently what we're seeing in the United States is that the population most affected right now is men who have sex with men. Because of that, here's what we all need to know. Monkeypox is spread through close, intimate, skin-to-skin -skin contact with someone who has monkeypox. So the chances of you just going into the community today and getting monkeypox remain extremely low. But here's why the White House is also stepping up efforts today to expand vaccine availability and testing. You know, it's really concerning. I think the opportunity to have contained this virus may have been lost. As Dr. Thomas Lamar told me, that may be true. Look at this CDC map. Three states now declaring a medical state of emergency. They have nearly half of those 6,000 cases. Illinois has 520, California 827, New York, the epicenter, nearly 1,400. We estimate that we have up to 150,000 people here in New York City who might be at risk for getting or transmitting monkeypox under the current criteria for vaccination. So we have work to do to get to that number. The concern, of course, is that this virus will spread beyond the gay and bisexual community. Four children have already tested positive for the virus. It's a pretty miserable infection. Uh, fortunately, it's not nearly as contagious as COVID-19, but it makes people feel terrible. About one in 10 who do get this virus will be hospitalized because of the pain and isolate from others. In most cases, however, it does resolve on its own. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Still to come, in case you missed it, fire crews make a rescue in a house fire in Mount Pleasant. Who they saved and the details we're learning about what caused it coming up after the break. Five twenty-two. right now. Let's take a look at some important stories that you might have missed. Crews from Mount Pleasant and Charleston Fire Departments put out a house fire caused by an unattended tea kettle yesterday. The fire was reported in the Long Grove subdivision in Mount Pleasant. Now, before firefighters arrived, Charleston County EMS rescued a dog from that home. Officials want to remind everybody, do not leave anything unattended on the stove while cooking. A deadly discovery in Somerville. This man here, 66 year old Randy Moore, is charged with abuse or neglect of a vulnerable adult resulting in death. Police say a man in Moore's care was living in poor conditions at a home on Lily Place. That man was found dead when officers were called about CPR in progress on July 24th. The name of the man who died hasn't been released.
And another man is facing charges after cashing in stolen scratch off tickets. According to SLED, John Johnson of Harleyville received $185 from a gas station after handing over four stolen lottery tickets. Johnson is charged with four counts of intent to defraud the lottery and was given $10,000 bond for each charge. He's already facing charges in the murder of a man near St. George in December. All right, taking a look at your all important fishing game forecast. So not the best day as far as fishing goes, at least according to the experts. And then we'll be uh, quite as snacky, but maybe a little appetizers. You probably get a little something for this afternoon. And then your extended forecast. Here's the good stuff. All right, so first off, notice our rain chances are a tad elevated today. Still pretty warm, not quite as much so tomorrow onward closer to average and then the weekend, particularly Sunday looks to be a bit of an umbrella day as far as our rain chances more significant. Now I will say no day is a complete washout. Uh, just Sunday, probably the day that most likely we'll see uh, more significant rain totals. Uh, even then still not a bad forecast when considering we kind of could use the rain. Now a look across the world at a few positive stories. It was a very special birthday for Juan Dudu and Juan Lily at the Beauval Zoo in France. The female twin pandas celebrated their first birthday with ice cakes made of bamboo shoots. The pair weighed just a few ounces when they were born, but now tip the scale at more than 66 pounds. The cubs will spend a few more years in France before being sent to China. The first woman from Mexico to travel to space has been given the keys to Mexico City. Katya Echezarreta was on board Blue Origin's fifth space tourism launch in June. She's also the youngest American to visit space at 26 years old. Echezarreta says she thinks it's important for women and girls to know they can achieve whatever they want. Taking a historic plunge, competitors leaped 75 feet off the old bridge in the Bosnia. Taking a historic plunge, competitors leaped 75 feet off of the old bridge in the Bosnia and Herzegovina city of Mostar over the weekend. This is a part of the annual diving competition. The winner dedicated his victory to his parents on their anniversary. Organizers say this is the 456th edition of the competition held at the old bridge, which was built by the Ottomans in 1566 and rebuilt after Bosnia's war. Still to come, an update on the McKinney fire burning in Northern California that still isn't contained. See the devastation after the break. And now it's time for a coffee break. We'll be right back. This coffee break is sponsored by Wendy's. A breakfast so good, you'll want to tell someone about it. Get yourself a tasty breakfast at participating Wendy's. Use right now. All right, when you walk outside, you are going to notice that humidity just kind of hit you in the face. It's pretty muggy and it's pretty uh, warm right now. We are currently 82 degrees in Mount Pleasant, 80 Charleston, 79 Somerville. So when the cool spot is 75, you know it's a pretty warm morning. So again, muggy as well. Dew points in the mid to upper 70, 78 degree dew point Charleston, 76 Beaufort. In fact, I was looking some coastal places have dew points right around that 80 mark. So yeah, again, Mother Nature really keeping the muggies on this morning, but satellite radar shows got a few clouds in Georgia. Those will drift closer to home, but future cast at least this particular model does show some showers and storms firing up this afternoon. Maybe not necessarily the entire metro, but certainly we have a chance. We're going to take another look at future cast, but just know that we do expect those storms this afternoon, but before that it will be hot. Let's go ahead and get an update on traffic though with your trooper Bob. Hey Bob. Hey, Chris, I'm a weather app with ABC News 4. I was looking to feel like Tim, but right now it feels like you're in a wool sock. That's for real. Here's a live look at the Crosstown. If you're headed down to the medical district, uh, no delays. or Everything's flowing nicely here. Light traffic. Did take a look at the James Island connector for you out to Folly Road. That's also light traffic. And uh, Savannah Highway, if you're coming in from Ravenel, Edisto, you're coming in from uh, Jacksonboro, no delays getting into uh, downtown. 26, 526 looking good. They wrapped up that construction about 30 minutes ago. No wrecks or incidents to tell you about, so we send it back to the newsroom. This ABC News 4 traffic tracker update was sponsored by Mr. Sparky, America's on-time electrician. 
We continue this half hour with your rapid rundown. Four people are now confirmed to be killed in the McKinney fire burning in Northern California. Authorities say two more bodies were found in the burn zone Monday at separate homes. The fire now spans more than 56,000 acres. It's burned more than 100 homes, sheds and other buildings, and it's still 0% contained. Author Stephen King is fighting against a, ma a major publishing merger. He volunteered to testify in D.C. yesterday as part of a federal antitrust trial. The DOJ says Penguin Random House combining with rival Simon and Schuster would give them way too much control over publishing and paying authors. King says consolidation is bad for competition and makes it difficult for writers to make a living wage. Our new satellite images appear to show the house where Al Qaeda leader Ayman al Zawahiri was killed. Now, this is the after photo of the home in Kabul. Last week, a drone strike killed Al Zawahiri while he was on the balcony. Now, he was one of the masterminds behind the September 11th attacks on the U.S. Now, it's unclear who owns the house where he was killed. Now, looking ahead, preparations are already underway for the 2030 World Cup. On Tuesday, Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, and Paraguay launched their joint campaign to be considered as hosts for the tournament. Now, the four countries argue that the tournament will be disputed among 48 teams by then, and they will need more space. Now, the South American nations are up against Spain and Portugal as potential hosts. 5.32 right now. Charleston County officials say a worker shortage at the 911 call center has reached urgent levels, which is why the county has changed its approach to recruit new dispatchers. And for more, we send it over to our Sean Mahoney, who joins us live outside of the Consolidated Call Center in North Charleston. Now, Sean, what has the county done to get more people on the phones? Hey, good morning, Mel. Good morning, Alyssa. Well, a lot of the employees at this call center, they work 12, 12 and a half hour shifts. Most of those hours they work, well, it comes in the form of overtime, which has led to a lot of those employees uh, getting burnout, which is part of the reason why the call center has seen a 15% decrease in the amount of employees manning the phones over the past year. But Charleston County officials say they have changed some of the features of the job to get more people to put on the headset and walk through those doors. Now, one of the features they had changed of this job is raising pay of telecommunicators at the call center to almost $20 an hour. Uh, and they also switched the work schedule for a lot of the operators to eight hour shifts instead of the current 12 and a half hour shift. Now, officials say more employees will help create a smoother process on both ends of the phone. It is urgent. I think our staffing is is always a high priority for us, um, making sure everything is together so we can serve our community. Um, but at this point, it is definitely urgent um, due to our staffing. So it would take a lot of overtime and weight off of our current staff, um, as well as be able to help us serve the community better, more efficiently. Now, the county created Work for 911 Wednesdays as a social media push to bring more awareness to open positions, part of their new initiative to try to get more people through those doors. And starting today, they will hold a new wave of interviews for these vacancies. And that starts today at around 8 o'clock this morning. Now, to apply, you don't, there's no qualifications that you need or prior experience that you need at a call center. All you need is a high school diploma or a GED. And if you want more information about these job openings and this new initiative by Charleston County, you can head over to my Twitter page and Facebook page at Sean Mahoney TV. I'll, I'll have the information posted on there shortly. Working for you this morning from North Charleston, Sean Mahoney, ABC News 4. All right, thanks, John. Now, here are the dates for all of the interview periods for the call center. Officials with Charleston County say they will be held at the Public Service Building in North Charleston from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Making a bold statement, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and a congressional delegation are in Taiwan today. Well, she says the visit symbolizes U.S. support for the self-governing island. But as Amy Kiley reports, American officials say the trip doesn't change the U.S. position on Taiwan. We come in friendship. We thank you for your leadership. We want the world to recognize that. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is demonstrating that the U.S. stands with Taiwan. 
And she's standing up to Chinese threats. Our response will be very firm, strong, and uh, forceful. She and a congressional delegation have been meeting with leaders in Taiwan today. We hope that the global alliance of democracy will stand with Taiwan. Pelosi is the highest-ranking U.S. official to visit the island in 25 years. But the White House says that doesn't change the U.S. position on Taiwan. There's no reason for Beijing to turn this visit into some sort of crisis. The U.S. acknowledges Beijing's position that Taiwan is part of China, but it doesn't accept the Communist Party's claim of sovereignty over the self-governing island. Pelosi is a long-standing critic of China's alleged human rights abuses. That country is putting on a display of military force in response to her visit. China has every right to defend its sovereignty and its territorial integrity. The White House tried to deter Pelosi from making the trip, but the visit is getting some bipartisan support. It's been unseemly and counterproductive for President Biden and his aides to have publicly sought to deter her. We have to step up and, uh, frankly, rally democracies around the world. Working for you, Amy Kiley, ABC4 News. Now, Russia's Supreme Court is labeling Ukraine's Azov Regiment a terrorist organization. Now, that designation could lead to terror charges for about 1,000 members of that group currently being held in Russian prison. Now, Russia has opened criminal charges against them, accusing them of shooting and killing civilians. The Azov Regiment says that Russia is looking for new excuses to explain its war crimes. A Ukraine's president has hailed the group as heroes. The rumored girlfriend of Russian President Vladimir Putin is included in the latest rounds of U.S. sanctions aimed at Russian elites. The U.S. Treasury Department announced it froze the visa of Alina Kabaeva. The department describes a 39-year-old former Olympic gymnast as having a close relationship to Putin. They also say she's currently the head of a Russian national media company that promotes Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Jurors in the Texas case against conspiracy theorist Alex Jones heard from the parents of a victim in the 2012 Sandy Hook shooting. Neil Heslin took the stand in an Austin courtroom yesterday. Heslin is the father of six-year-old Jesse Lewis, one of the 20 children and six adults killed in the Connecticut elementary school shooting. He testified he wanted the litigation to serve as a deterrent for Jones, who claimed the mass shooting was staged. The jury will determine how much in damages Jones will have to pay to Heslin and Jesse's mother, Scarlett Lewis. The parents won a default judgment against Jones earlier this year. Now, President Biden will soon sign into law the $280 billion Chips and Science Act, and leaders in Michigan want to be ready. The governor signed an executive directive on Tuesday to make sure that the state is prepared to snatch up grants to bring the new jobs and protect the auto industry. Gretchen Whitmere wants to bring chip manufacturers to Michigan. President Biden says the bill funds the entire supply chain from development to production. We invented these chips. We modernized these chips. We made them work. And there's a lot more we can get done. Michigan's auto industry was hit hard by a semiconductor chip shortage during the pandemic. Plants were closed and employees laid off as thousands of vehicles were left stranded, waiting for the chips needed to get to the sale lot. Tiger Woods reportedly turned down an offer worth up to $800 million to join a Saudi-backed golf series. In an interview that aired Monday, Live Golf CEO Greg Norman confirmed Woods was offered seven to $800 million to join the series. The controversial Saudi-backed tour has convinced some big names from the golfing world, like Phil Mickelson, to lead the established PGA Tour to participate for big money. Okay, we are tracking uh, thunderstorm chances increasing in our forecast. We'll have the details here coming up in just a bit. And still to come, a new mind-blowing technology is offering people who are deaf or hard of hearing that can change a way to engage in conversation. And we'll tell you more about that revolutionary tech after the break. And a peak display of athletic prowess and devastating speed. We'll tell you about this adorable tradition and much more coming up in the Morning Buzz.
Mm. All right, mm. it's time for the morning buzz. All right, you better grab an umbrella. <laughs> Katy Perry is making it rain pizza. Now that's something I could get on board with, right? The pop star made a surprise appearance at a nightclub in Vegas, and of course, there she was enjoying some pizza. We just saw that. <laughs> now that's when a few bystanders asked for a slice. Now I know I would, and Katie immediately obliged. Now one witness said her aim left a lot to be desired, though, saying it didn't seem like any of the slices actually made it to their targets. <laughs> A lot of pizza to the face. I guess. It is yeah. okay. So it, it is a funny video because you watch and every person like drops the pizza or it misses, <laughs> almost hits someone in the face. I can't say I've ever caught pizza midair. Yeah. So no. mm, yeah, no. I must but, take a. Oh. I mean, the, I guess it's the thought that counts. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Okay. Hope she gave out Tide pens as well. <laughs> <laughs> now to probably the cutest race you will see all year. In the spirit of competition, the drive to excel, and the desire for a treat. Oh of that was in the air at the annual Corgi race at Canterbury Park in Shakopee, Minnesota. I love this. 70, Shakopee, excuse me. 72 <laughs> Fast and Furious Corgis gave it their all across six heats. Uh, some of them look like they even had their sport coats on. In the end, a zippy little guy named Teddy came out top dog. Congrats to Teddy and the rest of the competitors <laughs> oh. too. Oh, great job guys. Corgi puppies are adorable. I did have they a really corgi are. at one point. Oh, you did? Mm -hmm. Yes, Roxy. Aww. Aww. <laughs> well, Applebee's has a new way to spice up date nights. The restaurant chain has unveiled four lip glosses that are based on their wing sauces. Huh. Okay, uh, they are Get Me Hot Buffalo, Be My Honey Pepper, Sweet Chili Kiss, and Honey Barbecue Tea. These products are the result of a collaboration between Applebee's and makeup company Winky Lux. Do you recognize that name? I do, but I've never, I don't recognize these uh, flavors. Or huh. The gloss with sauce is only available on Winky Lux's website. Uh, get it while it lasts. Do that. Would you wear that? I think I'll leave it um, to others. I want everybody else to have a chance to experience it. <laughs> How I wanna, kind of so Yeah, I don't want to take it for all for myself. <laughs> well, the topic of whether to have subtitles on a TV show is actually a common living room debate for some people. Now, though, you can add subtitles to real life, a technology, it's called X-ray glass. This is actually really unique. It's a pair of augmented reality glasses that allows you to see your conversations in real time. Now, its purpose is meant to help people who are deaf and hard of hearing, but that's not all. Officials say the software will soon be able to translate different languages, as well as communicate pitch and voice tones as well. Now that Super is cool. cool. Yeah, I know. Super that is cool. cool. It would help a lot of people in this world. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and especially, I mean, anytime you've been to a foreign country and you you don't understand what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. You there know, you go, you all of a sudden you're it. like, things you take for granted, you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah. I just want to find the on. bathroom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. There you go. So, all right, well, uh, any of you guys runners? Are you runners? Yes. I haven't ran okay. in years. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's tough to adjust to this heat and humidity. It's yes. early morning or late at night. It is, but even then the humidity doesn't always go away. Right. So uh, if you're gonna be going for a run this morning, I will say uh, maybe have an extra glass of water before you go because it's going to pull it out of you. So to go ahead and take a look Ooh. right now, temperatures, it is a balmy 81 degrees this morning and it is almost 6 a.m. So not cooling down a whole lot, especially near the coast. Uh, other places are a tad better, but even then it's still going to be pretty warm. Those 90s are sticking around for most afternoons. Now, one difference from what we've had, we've had a bit of a dry stretch. It hasn't been like as long as what we had in May and June, uh, but we're going to start to see some more afternoon storms, kind of keeping with the trend that August is typically one of the wetter months of the year for us, and Mother Nature is going to turn the faucet on a little bit. Now, warm and muggy nights will continue as well, but at least we might get some cooling from those storms, which, you know, that's always welcome. But 80 still, Charleston right now. Same thing, Beaufort, 75, Walterboro, 79, Somerville. And those dew points are in the mid to upper 70s as well. So it really is quite muggy when you step outside. Satellite radar showing that we are seeing a few thin clouds kind of start to drift in. So I got, when I walked out this morning, just saw a couple puffy clouds, but I did see the stars. Might start to see a fewer 
of those as those clouds drift in. But in general, the rain is going to hold off until later today. But even then, still 94 Charleston, same thing, Somerville, 93 Monk's Corner. And here we go, future cast showing right around 1, 2 o'clock, those showers and storms firing up. Maybe a few leftovers closer to town this afternoon, but honestly, it shows them moving inland fairly quickly. And then by 8 o'clock, we're pretty much done. So kind of an earlier start. And then as we go in through the day tomorrow, might even see a few morning showers, which would kind of be welcome either way. So tonight, small rain chances, temperatures in the 70s, upper 70s specifically, and our rain chances a little bit lower Friday. But look at that the weekend. Yeah, trending a little unsettled. We'll take another look at that coming up. But let's talk about those roads with our trooper Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, Chris, there's a live look at uh, 526 uh, westbound as we approach Don Holt Bridge. This is everything coming out of Mount Pleasant, coming up to uh, the north area here. A little heavier volume on the eastbound side. I've seen the same thing on 26 eastbound, but good thing is school's still not in, so you're seeing lighter traffic than you normally would about three weeks from now. No incidents or wrecks to tell you about. Looking good also coming out of Goose Creek if you're taking Highway 52 out to the connector. This ABC News 4 Traffic Tracker Update was sponsored by Mr. Sparky, America's on-time electrician. And for the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Visual effects create the magic that makes people want to go to the movies. Movies are special effects. A new series shows you how movie magic is made, literally. Light and Magic chronicles the rise of industrial light and magic, the special effects company created by George Lucas to make Star Wars. The show is directed by Empire Strikes Back and Raiders of the Lost Ark writer Lawrence Kasdan, who tells me the work ILM does freed him up to be as creative as possible while writing these worlds. You try not to think of well, how much money have we got or how much time have we got. You think, well, if I had an ideal world, what would I put in the script? And then you see how close can you get to those things. Light and Magic is out now on Disney+. Plus. Thank you for your donation. New today on Hulu, it's season two of FX's critically acclaimed series, Reservation Dogs. The Native American coming-of-age comedy picks up in the aftermath of last season's tornado. Two episodes out now on Hulu, with a new one coming each week. Hey, I'm, I'm here to see D'Angelo. Also, the fourth and final season of the Emmy-winning FX comedy, Atlanta, will debut September 15th. The first trailer dropped Tuesday. Chris Rock is taking his four-season sitcom Everybody Hates Chris to the world of animation. Everybody Still Hates Chris will be a reimagined animated version of the show for both Paramount Plus and Comedy Central. The series will follow Rock's teen years with the iconic comedian narrating. And happy birthday to Tony Bennett, the legendary singer turning 96 today, while actor Michael Ealy is 49. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. So the calm one baby bottle is being recalled due to a very serious health concern. The important information you need to know after the break. And despite high gas prices, business is booming at Uber. Hear what's driving their numbers coming up in our business block. Your uh, tropics forecast and there's not a lot going on. Things are still quiet and they will stay that way, at least for the next foreseeable future, which we like. Your travel forecast shows uh, storm chances, Albany, Georgia, starting to pick up just a little bit, and we're going to start to see that as well. So uh, come, some days not looking as stormy as others, and even, honestly, even today and tomorrow, there'll be quite a few places that you won't get anything. The weekend, though, does trend and look a little more unsettled, especially Sunday. If there is a day that you want to grab the umbrella, I'd say if you want to go to Sunday brunch, Maybe take that umbrella as well. All right, Chris, thank you. A popular baby bottle manufacturer has issued a recall due to high lead levels in some of its products. Leaders with the Consumer Product Safety Commission say the markings on the outside of some of Nook's first choice glass baby bottles contain lead levels higher than those set by the federal government. The affected bottles have white and gray stars on the outside. Now, whether you need a ride or you're craving your favorite pizza or maybe you need some groceries, Uber has services to fulfill all of those problems. Now, company leaders say it's one of the reasons that Uber's Q2 numbers were po positive. Now, despite high gas prices and soaring inflation, Uber's rebound from the pandemic isn't slowing down. Now, Uber brought in $8.1 billion between April, May and June. Still to come, the fate of the death penalty in South Carolina is up for discussion in a courtroom this week. What's at stake? Coming up in just a few minutes.
from ABC News 4 in Charleston. This is Good Morning Charleston. Well, good morning, Charleston. I'm Melissa Holmes, and we have a new face here. Yes, I'm Mel Orland. <laughs> so happy to be here. And of course, we thank you for starting your day with us. And Chris Nesman, Storm Tracker Meteorologist, here with our first check of the weather. And uh, uh, Chris, I've been in Charleston for a little more than a week now, and the humidity every morning just snaps <laughs> me right in the face. Yeah, I, I still remember first summer we moved here, my wife and I went, what did we just do? <laughs> you know, we came from out west, which is real dry. Yeah. Uh, you get used to it. I will say, yeah. I went to school in Florida. I'm used to the humidity from go. Virginia, but um, it's something about being close to the coast. It is, it is, but I will say we at least get the sea breeze that makes it a little more comfortable every day, and we are going to see that later on today. Now, right now, best time of the morning where you get that little red glow up just with that deep blue sky right before sunrise and always love this from our Edisto camera right now. Uh, temperatures to 80 degrees currently, so it is a very muggy, mild morning at that. Uh, 79 Somerville, in fact, Mount Pleasant is 81 degrees right now, so really you have to go pretty far inland to kind of get away from the super mugginess. That's what we're going to go with this morning. A lot of places with those upper 70 dew points. Now, the satellite radar showing we've got a few clouds and a couple showers outside of Atlanta right now. We are going to see a few of those clouds drift in. Uh, Futurecast back set up. It also kind of shows that we'll start to see a few showers and storms pop up this afternoon. Now, of course, the question is, Who's going to get it? Well, a lot of folks inland might, but closer to the coast, your chances are lower. We're going to take a look at a different future cast model, kind of update it and kind of take a look at that. But just know that today will top out about 94 degrees. Let's go ahead and get an update on those roads with our trooper Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, good morning, Chris. Good morning, Alyssa. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mel. Thank you for uh, coming to the morning show with us. We're happy to have you excited there. Here's a live look at uh, Dorchester Road right here, Joint Base, Charleston. If you're coming down from Oak Brook, this is what traffic looks like coming towards me. You're not going to have any issues. Uh, if you're headed out towards the base, we salute you for your service. Same thing on Red Bank Road. No delays out towards uh, the Navy base. Bridges look fine. Arthur Ravenel, Wando, and the... Uh, Don Holt looking A-OK -okay in both directions. Everything flowing right there at interstate speeds and no crashes to tell you about. Right now, let's check in with Chris on the drive times. All right, hey, thanks, Bob. And those drive times, per usual, sitting pretty. It's easy being green, at least when you're talking about traffic uh, road conditions. So no big problems to speak of, at least not with these times. This ABC News 4 Traffic Tracker Update was sponsored by Mr. Sparky, America's on-time electrician. 602 right now, and it's a job where every second matters. But officials with Charleston County say there's a critical need for dispatchers. For more, we send it over to our Sean Mahoney, who joins us live outside the 911 call center in North Charleston. Good morning, Sean, and just how urgent of a situation has this shortage created? Hey, good morning, Mel. Well, you might notice the different set of uh, microphone that I'm using to talk to you guys today. Well, it's headsets like these that operators here at the call center in North Charleston for Charleston County use every day, but a worker shortage that has left 47 open positions here at the call center has forced some of these employees to wear this headset a little bit longer, which can be a little taxing for the ears, if I do say so myself, but it also could affect response response times to some of these people calling in their most dire time of need. Now, officials with Charleston County say on average, a little over three quarter of the calls that come in to the call center get answered in under 15 seconds. But those that don't, well, they may get have to get put on hold until an operator is available. This is because the call center currently only has enough staff to fill the minimum number of operators needed for each shift. Now, it's been so bad, many employees have had to work 12 and a half hour shifts to pick up the slack, which employees say burns them out and also burns through taxpayers' wallets. We approximately our department used um, approximately $2 million worth of overtime, just overtime last year in 2021 because of our staffing. Um, so that overtime not only taxes the citizens, but it also taxes our staff, um, you know, not having that out of work time um, to get their, get their life straight and all that stuff, spend time with family. 
Now this time last year, the call center had 83 people working the phone lines. Now they only have 70 employees and to put it in perspective, they need 117 to be fully staffed. So what is the county doing to try and change that statistic? Well, coming up in a half hour, we'll tell you about a new initiative by Charleston County to try and get more people to walk through those doors. But for now, Mel, Alyssa, I'll send it back to you guys. All right, Sean, thank you. And officials with Charleston County say that the call center received almost 900,000 calls last year. Another shakeup within the Charleston County School District. A spokesman confirms Chief of Staff Erica Taylor is no longer working for the district. We're told the position was eliminated. Taylor had been with the district for nearly 10 years, serving in a strategy and communications role before becoming chief of staff. This comes after CCSD announced major changes last week, including the resignation of Chief Academic Officer Carolyn Belcher. The interim title was removed for Superintendent Don Kennedy. He's now serving in that role until a permanent hire is made. CCSD board member Courtney Waters spoke to ABC News 4 about this. It's a lot of change when we're getting ready to hire a new superintendent very shortly. And so I don't think that the board should be standing for this. I don't think we should be condoning this. And I do think we need to do something about it. A CCSD spokesperson told us, quote, as superintendent, Kennedy reorganizes the district to achieve the goal of all students reading on grade level by fifth grade in 2027. Some employees will be moved and some positions will be changed to accomplish that goal. Now, what plays out in the Richland County Courthouse in Columbia this week just might determine the future of the death penalty in the Palmetto State. All attorneys for the four death row inmates suing the state are arguing that the death penalty is not constitutional and the conditions of execution in South Carolina are cruel. Right now, those sentenced to death in South Carolina have the option between the electric chair or a firing squad. There are currently 34 inmates on death row in South Carolina. This afternoon, South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control is going to hold a statewide media briefing to provide an update on the status of monkeypox across the state. Dr. Linda Bell, a state epidemiologist, will speak at this briefing. According to the CDC, South Carolina has 23 confirmed monkeypox cases as of yesterday. North Carolina has 69. Okay, starting to see things glow up a little bit this morning, and we are looking at maybe a few thunderstorms this afternoon. We'll have the latest with a new update from Futurecast here coming up. And a mishap sent a paraglider plunging to earth with his parachute tangled up. ABC's Gio Benetez has the details in today's GMA First Look. Oh, since the top of the hour, you've probably seen a new face on the set today. <laughs> Over there. Uh, this is our Mel Orland. She will be the new co-anchor of Good Morning Charleston. We are so, exci so excited, excited to have you here. I can't even contain my excitement. <laughs> <laughs> Alyssa, thank you. You both, Alyssa and Chris, you guys have been so welcoming to me, so I really appreciate it. Happy to be here in the low country. I've spent a lot of time in the north, so I'm so happy to be back in the South. I can okay, imagine. so you say back in the South. So <laughs> yes. you're so, originally from this. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, so I'm originally from Virginia, went to school in Tallahassee at Florida State. I'm sorry, Clemson fans, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I mean, we're in South Carolina and it, a friendly rivalry, right? Well, not much of a rivalry in the past couple years. But anyways, um, <laughs> and that's speaking on FSU part. But um, but yeah, so I went to Florida State and then worked in Tallahassee for a little bit. I've lived in North Dakota, Central Pennsylvania, most recently Buffalo, New York. Uh, as you can see from behind us, there's a, a picture of my husband and I and our dog in the snow. Not much Aww. snow will be here in <laughs> Buffalo or in, in Charleston. Um, but uh, but yeah, so and I'm just excited to be back in the South. Right. Yeah. So you love mornings. I love mornings. I've done mornings a majority of my career. Yeah. It's same. Just, I don't, you're just a morning person. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like it's the personality. It's the lifestyle. I like You're to see done by 11. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I love the sunrises and I know Charleston has some beautiful sunrises. Yeah, that's yes. definitely a selling point. Yeah, and, and I would actually just say too, um, another part of Charleston is uh, just the outdoorsy stuff and yeah. like the lifestyle. So what are, I mean, I, you kind of mentioned a little bit to us, but what are some of the things you like to do, you know, hobbies? Yeah, I guess? so um, I love to run. Uh, I love to explore new trails, um, new parks, and uh, my husband and I love boating. We have a boat and we will be um, out on the water 
this weekend ah. if the weather cooperates. <laughs> uh, but we are just excited to get it in the water and just explore all the waterways. And, and he loves to fish and plenty. of course, yeah. 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 I'll go with you. Running, not so much. Boating, two thumbs up for me. All right. Well, we'll have to go out on the boat yeah. one day. Running when it's not disgustingly muggy outside. Exactly. And when, exactly. When is that? Uh, November. Right. <laughs> so, no, but it is certainly humid. So, if you're going to go for a run, maybe this, like this evening or right after, just extra glass of okay. water or something, maybe a sports drink, because you'll notice when you step outside. In fact, taking a look right now, you can kind of take a look over the Ravenel. Not a bad morning. Cars are moving along just fine, uh, but it is certainly a mild start. Mount Pleasant, a mere 81 degrees. Not much of a cool down, uh, so certainly you'll notice it when you step outside. And the truth be told, 90s are sticking around the afternoon. I mean, we are on the dog days of summer. No surprises there. Also, no surprises. We're going to start to see more afternoon storm chances. August is one of our wetter months in the year. In fact, it's the wettest month, I should say, for much of the low country. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to start to see those pop up storms more common and more active. Those muggy nights, of course, will stick around as well. But there you go. Temperatures mid to upper 70s and then some 80s closer to the coast, especially right around the Charleston metro area. Uh, Johns Island, too, right about 81 degrees. Dew points mid to upper 70s as well. So that muggy factor certainly is there and satellite radar showing we've got a few thin clouds drifting in from Georgia, a few showers on the way to Atlanta, a couple showers off the coast of Savannah, but for us not seeing that as much. We're just going to hit about 94 degrees, so still plenty hot. That heat index a little uh, similar to yesterday, even though yesterday was hotter. We got a little more humidity today, but we do expect those storms to fire up this afternoon. Here we go. Here's one o'clock starting to see a few do their job, maybe bring in a bit of a cool down to a couple spots and they'll continue into this afternoon and evening. Now one difference is they'll be moving a little quicker today, so the evening commute actually should be plenty dry. Hopefully that'll make things smoother for commuters and then tomorrow we might start to see a few showers and storms as well. So upper 70s, maybe a few 80s tonight and then again those rain chances bouncing around, but they do pick up for the weekend. So if you're going to go or attempt boating this weekend, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that coming up. But first, let's talk about those roads with our Trooper Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, you know, I don't like uh, getting stuck at a red light, but it, so it is. Live look at uh, Dorchester Road right here at Lincoln Boulevard for those folks. If you're making your way down towards uh, Bosch, uh, we're right here at that light there uh, or uh, Joint Base Charleston, Oak Brook. No delays on the east or westbound sides. Interstates are looking good. I'm actually going to drive over to 26 and uh, take a look at that uh, right now, right around Ashley Phosphate. No crashes or incidents to tell you about. We'll make this short and sweet and send it back to the newsroom. All right. Hey, thanks, Bob. So those drive times sitting pretty right now. No big delays to speak of everybody at or below the 20 minute mark. Uh, so again, so far so good, though we'll likely start to see that I-26 number tick up kind of as we approach the seven o'clock hour. This ABC News 4 traffic tracker update was sponsored by Mr. Sparky, America's on time electrician. 616 right now, the White House is stepping up efforts today to stop the spread of the monkeypox virus. Uh, they've just launched a monkeypox response team to provide more resources nationwide. Medical reporter Liz Bonus explains what that means. Hey there, hello to you. This team, all in effort to try and curb this outbreak. Monkeypox hitting nearly 6,000 cases in the U.S. so far and is now in 48 states, including Washington, D.C. and Puerto Rico. This same disaster relief workers for everything from bad weather to coronavirus now taking on monkeypox. The head guy to stop the spread, Robert Fenton, an administrator with the Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA as it's known. The CDC's head of HIV prevention also helping in the response. Here's why. Currently what we're seeing in the United States is that the population most affected right now is men who have sex with men. Because of that, here's what we all need to know. Monkeypox is spread through close, intimate, skin-to-skin -skin contact with someone who has monkeypox. So the chances of you just going into the community today and getting monkeypox remain extremely low. But here's why the White House is also stepping up efforts today to expand vaccine availability and testing. You know, it's really concerning. I think the opportunity to have contained this virus may have been lost. As Dr. Thomas Lamar told me, that may be true. Look at this CDC map. Three states now declaring a medical state of emergency. They have nearly half of those 6,000 cases. Illinois has 520, California 827, 
New York, the epicenter, nearly 1,400. We estimate that we have up to 150,000 people here in New York City who might be at risk for getting or transmitting monkeypox under the current criteria for vaccination. So we have work to do to get to that number. The concern, of course, is that this virus will spread beyond the gay and bisexual community. Four children have already tested positive for the virus. It's a pretty miserable infection. Uh, fortunately, it's not nearly as contagious as COVID-19, but it makes people feel terrible. About one in 10 who do get this virus will be hospitalized because of the pain and isolate from others. In most cases, however, it does resolve on its own. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. Now back to you. Well, still the common case you missed it. Fire crews make a rescue in a house fire in Mount Pleasant. Who they saved and the details we're learning about what caused it after the break. But right now it's time for a coffee break. We'll be right back. This coffee break is sponsored by Wendy's. A breakfast so good, you'll want to tell someone about it. Get yourself a tasty breakfast at participating Wendy's. On your Wednesday morning, let's take a look at some important stories you might have missed. Crews from Mount Pleasant and Charleston Fire Departments put out a house fire caused by an unattended tea kettle yesterday. A fire was reported in the Long Grove subdivision in Mount Pleasant. Before firefighters arrived, Charleston County EMS rescued a dog from the home. Officials want to remind everybody, do not leave anything unattended on the stove while cooking. A deadly discovery in Somerville. This man here, 66 year old Randy Moore, is charged with abuse or neglect of a vulnerable adult resulting in death. Police say a man in Moore's care was living in poor conditions at a home on Lily Place. That man was found dead when officers were called about CPR in progress on July 24th. The name of the man who died hasn't been released. Moore was booked into the Dorchester County Jail. Okay, taking a look at your beach forecast, the all important beach forecast. Uh, good news, rip current risk is low. That water temperature still a very warm 86 degrees and uh, air temperature pushing right around 90. And today we only have one high tide. Uh, every so often again, you'll have three tide uh, ends, we'll call them, because the fourth one ends up being next day. And that's what we've got going on. Now your travel forecast shows that uh, Albany, Georgia, one of the closer ones to us, Chance of storm still hot. We're going to be there as well. So our storm chances do start to pick up, especially the afternoon. This weekend looking unsettled. Now I will say Saturday, there'll still be plenty of sunshine. Just those afternoon storms more significant. Sunday though, maybe grab an umbrella before you head to brunch. I think we'll see a little more than just afternoon storms. Now a look across the world at a few positive stories. It was a very special birthday for Juan Dudu and Juan Lily at the Beauval Zoo in France. The female twin pandas celebrated their first birthday with ice cakes made of bamboo shoots. The pair weighed just a few ounces when they were born, but now tip the scale at more than 66 pounds. The cubs will spend a few more years in France before being sent to China. The first woman from Mexico to travel to space has been given the keys to Mexico City. Katya Echezarreta was on board Blue Origin's fifth space tourism launch in June. She's also the youngest American to visit space at 26 years old. Echezarreta says she thinks it's important for women and girls to know they can achieve whatever they want. Taking a historic plunge, competitors leaped 75 feet off of the old bridge in the Bosnia and Herzegovina city of Mostar over the weekend. This is a part of the annual diving competition. The winner dedicated his victory to his parents on their anniversary. Organizers say this is the 456th edition of the competition held at the old bridge, which was built by the Ottomans in 1566 and rebuilt after Bosnia's war. Still the common update on the McKinney fire burning in Northern California that still isn't contained. See the devastation after the break. Weather window presented by the National Weather Desk. Water spouts are more common along the U.S. Southeast coast than you might think. They're even observed late summer and early fall in the Great Lakes. There are two types of water spouts. A tornadic water spout is similar to a tornado dropping from a severe thunderstorm cloud, sometimes moving ashore. A fair weather water spout forms at the water surface and builds upward, usually into a line of dark based cumulus clouds. Follow the National Weather Desk on your favorite social media platform. continues right now.
All right, hey, taking a look. Uh, well, that's not exactly what we wanted. Froze on me, but hey, let's go ahead and pull up what we did want. But spoil alert, it's going to be a pretty stormy week. But let's look at the good picture right there. OK, there we go. Islander camera right now not looking too shabby. Uh, lots of sunshine coming up this morning, but notice we do have some clouds sliding in as well. Really, the biggest thing is a muggy morning. So 81 degrees right now, 80 Charleston, 77 Georgetown, 77 in Somerville, and those dew points are in the upper 70s too, and that's kind of the big deal. So later on this afternoon, though, we are expecting some thunderstorms. Again, you did see that seven day there a little early than I'd hoped but it does show you too those pop up storms. We're going to take a look at future cast because once again, not everyone's going to see it. We'll show you who has a better chance of seeing those storms and who's probably going to stay dry once again today. Again, details coming up, but first let's go ahead and get an update on those roads with our trooper Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, Chris, here's the westbound side of Interstate 26 right near Ashley Phosphate. I was on the eastbound side just a couple minutes ago, maybe just the tap of the brakes for those folks uh, allowing uh, that traffic to merge coming on from Ashley Phosphate 226 eastbound, but not a major slowdown. We do have a, a tree in the roadway that's going to be in Charleston County, Oak Island Road, at Island, uh, Lewis, excuse me, Lewisberry Lane, Lewisberry Lane. Watch out for uh, blue lights there as they uh, remove that tree. Not seeing any delays on 526. You have a nice ride over from West Ashley towards Mount Pleasant and no wrecks to tell you about in this second hour of the show. This ABC News 4 traffic tracker update was sponsored by Mr. Sparky, America's on-time electrician. And don't forget ABC News 4 is always working for you with drive times as well as national and local headlines scrolling right on the bottom of your screen. We continue this half hour with your rapid rundown. Four people are now confirmed to be killed in the McKinney fire burning in Northern California. Authorities say two more bodies were found in the burn zone Monday at separate homes. The fire now spans more than 56,000 acres. It's burned more than 100 homes, sheds and other buildings, and it's still 0% contained. Author Stephen King fighting against a major publishing merger. He volunteered to testify in D.C. yesterday as part of a federal antitrust trial. The DOJ saying Penguin Random House combining with rivals Simon & Schuster would give them too much control over publishing and paying authors. King says consolidation is bad for competition and makes it difficult for writers to make a living wage. Our new satellite images appear to show the house where Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri was killed. Now, this is the after photo of the home in Kabul. Now, last week, a drone strike killed al-Zawahiri al while he was on the balcony. Now, he was one of the masterminds behind the September 11th attack on the U.S. It's unclear who owns the house where he was killed. Now, looking ahead, preparations are already underway for the 2030 World Cup. On Tuesday, Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, and Paraguay launched their joint campaign to be considered as host for the tournament. Now, the four countries argue that the tournament will be disputed among 48 teams by then and will need more space. Now, the South American nations are up against Spain and Portugal as potential hosts. Charleston County officials say a worker shortage at the 911 call center has reached urgent levels, which is why the county has changed its approach to recruit new dispatchers. And for more, we send it over to our Sean Mahoney, who joins us live outside of the consolidated call center in North Charleston. Now, Sean, what has the county done to get more people on the phones? Well, Alyssa, Mel, uh, a lot of the employees here at the call center for Charleston County, uh, because of this work shortage, have to work 12 hour shifts, which if you can imagine, leads to a lot of burnout, burnout so much to the tune of a 15% decrease in the workforce here at the call center over the past year. Now, because of this, now Charleston County is changing some of the features of this job position to try and get more people to put on the headset and head through those doors. Now, one of the changes that Charleston County made was increasing the pay for the telecommunicators at the call center to almost $20 an hour, $19.18 per hour to be exact. And they also switched these employees or are in the process of switching these new hires to eight hour shifts instead of the current 12 and a half hour shifts. Officials say more employees with these changes will create a smoother process on both ends of the phone line. It is urgent. I think our staffing is 
is always a high priority for us, um, making sure everything is together so we can serve our community. Um, but at this point, it is definitely urgent um, due to our staffing. So it would take a lot of overtime and weight off of our current staff, um, as well as be able to help us serve the community better, more efficiently. Now, the county created Work for 911 Wednesdays as a social media push to try and bring more awareness to these open positions. And starting today, the county will be holding a new wave of interviews for these vacancies, part of this new initiative to try and bring more people through those doors. Now, to apply, there's no prior experience needed. All you need is a high school diploma or a GED. And if you want more information about this push and about what you need to know if you're looking to interview for one of these positions, you can head over to my Twitter. Twitter or Facebook page at Sean Mahoney TV. I've posted all the details there. Working for you this morning from North Charleston, Sean Mahoney, ABC News 4. Well, thanks, Sean. Here are the dates for all of the interview periods for the call center. Officials with Charleston County say they will be held at the Public Service Building in North Charleston from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Making a bold statement, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi and a congressional delegation are in Taiwan today. Now she says the visit symbolizes U.S. support for the self-governing island. But as Amy Kiley reports, American officials say the trip doesn't change the U.S. position on Taiwan. We come in friendship. We thank you for your leadership. We want the world to recognize that. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi is demonstrating that the U.S. stands with Taiwan. And she's standing up to Chinese threats. Our response will be very firm, strong, and uh, forceful. She and a congressional delegation have been meeting with leaders in Taiwan today. We hope that the global alliance of democracy will stand with Taiwan. Pelosi is the highest ranking U.S. official to visit the island in 25 years. But the White House says that doesn't change the U.S. position on Taiwan. There's no reason for Beijing to turn this visit into some sort of crisis. The U.S. acknowledges Beijing's position that Taiwan is part of China, but it doesn't accept the Communist Party's claim of sovereignty over the self-governing island. Pelosi is a long-standing critic of China's alleged human rights abuses. That country is putting on a display of military force in response to her visit. China has every right to defend its sovereignty and its territorial integrity. The White House tried to deter Pelosi from making the trip, but the visit is getting some bipartisan support. It's been unseemly and counterproductive for President Biden and his aides to have publicly sought to deter her. We have to step up and, uh, frankly, rally democracies around the world. Working for you, Amy Kiley, ABC4 News. And new this morning, we're now hearing that Nancy Pelosi has left Taiwan. There's still no word yet on where she's headed. While Russia's Supreme Court is labeling Ukraine's Yuzov Regiment as a terrorist organization. Now, that designation could lead terror charges for about 1,000 members of the group currently being held in Russian prison. Now, Russia has opened criminal charges against them, accusing them of shooting and killing civilians. The Azov Regiment says Russia is looking for new excuses to explain its war crimes. Ukraine's president hailed the group as heroes. The rumored girlfriend of Russian President Vladimir Putin is included in this latest round of U.S. sanctions aimed at Russian elites. The U.S. Treasury Department announcing it froze the visa of Alina Kabaeva. The department describing the 39-year-old former Olympic gymnast as having a close relationship to Putin. They also say she's currently the head of a Russian national media company that promotes Russia's invasion of Ukraine. While President Biden will soon sign into law the $280 billion Chips and Science Act, and leaders in Michigan want to be ready. The governor signed an executive directive Tuesday to make sure that the state is prepared to snatch up grants to bring in new jobs and protect the auto industry. Gretchen Whitmere wants to bring chip manufacturers to Michigan. Now, President Biden says the bill funds the entire supply chain from development to production. We invented these chips. We modernized these chips. We made them work. And there's a lot more we can get done. Michigan's auto industry was hit hard by a semiconductor chip shortage during the pandemic. Plants were closed and employees laid off as thousands of vehicles were left stranded, waiting for the chips needed to get to the sale lot. 
639 right now. Tiger Woods reportedly turned down an offer worth up to $800 million to join a Saudi-backed golf series. In an interview that aired Monday, Live Golf CEO Greg Norman confirmed that Woods was offered seven to $800 million to join the series. The controversial Saudi-backed tour has convinced some big names from the golfing world, like Phil Mickelson, to leave the established PGA Tour to participate for big money. Seven-time Formula One world champion Lewis Hamilton is joining the new Denver Broncos ownership group. He joins Walmart heir Rob Walton, who shared his excitement for Hamilton entering the agreement, saying he's a fierce competitor that knows what it takes to win. The purchase and sale agreement initially began in June, and it's still pending approval from the NFL Finance Committee and league ownership. Hey, again, we are looking at storm chances increasing. We'll take a look at two different weather models to kind of help show you what we're expecting this afternoon and in the rest of the forecast. And still to come, one baby bottle being recalled due to a very serious health concern. The important information you need to know after the break. The um, marina and the harbor looking very nice this morning. It certainly is a warm morning, so if you're going to head out boating, it should be quite comfortable for you. Temperatures right now right around 80 degrees in Mount Pleasant. Not going to cool off a whole lot more, so again, yeah. And uh, this afternoon, the 90s are sticking around, but here's kind of the big thing. Afternoon thunderstorm chances, they're ramping up. We're going to show you again two future cast models to kind of plan out your day and take a look at the rest of the forecast once again. A popular baby bottle manufacturer has issued a recall due to high lead levels in some of its products. Leaders with the Consumer Product Safety Commission say the markings on the outside of some of Nook's first choice glass baby bottles contain lead levels higher than those set by the federal government. The affected bottles have white and gray stars on the outside. And we have an update on the nation's critical baby formula shortage. Now, it looks like we are headed in the right direction, but there's still a long way to go. A new report shows formula availability is better than it has been, but it's still not back to normal. About 20% of all types of baby formula products were out of stock during the week of July 24th. It was only 10% before Abbott Nutrition's nationwide recall. Whether you need a ride or maybe you're craving your favorite pizza or maybe you just need some groceries. Uber has services, of course, to fulfill all of these problems. Company leaders say it's one of the reasons Uber's Q2 numbers were just so positive. Despite high gas prices and soaring inflation, Uber's rebound from the pandemic isn't slowing down. Uber brought in $8.1 billion between April, May and June. Still to come here, the very status of the death penalty in South Carolina may hang on a lawsuit taking place this week. We'll tell you exactly what's at stake in a few minutes. Good morning, Charleston. We're working for you with a storm tracker update. All right, and we've got a beautiful sunrise this morning. Look at that. Oh, birds. Okay, nature attacking the camera. I've uh, been seeing quite a few crows and stuff hanging out by our sky cams, but they're in good locations for a reason. Uh, but still very nice this morning. 80 degrees Charleston. A lot of sunshine uh, right now, but we are seeing a few clouds drifting from Georgia. The biggest thing you walk out, you notice the muggy factor. Temperatures are in the upper 70s around 80 degrees. Dew points above that 75 mark for the most part. And while that's not a significant mark, that's kind of the point that we generally start to just go you outside and yeah, it's a little bit this morning, uh, but right now satellite radar again, just a few of these clouds drifting in from Georgia. Colleton County seeing a little bit this morning. Showers and thunderstorms offshore, a few showers around Atlanta, but for us, we'll likely have to wait till this afternoon to see some closer to home, but still 94 degrees. Charleston, Somerville, that heat index as high as 105 and then even this evening temperatures are will cool down once again, but still a couple places likely staying right around 80 degrees. 
pending no showers that bring some cooler air in, and that actually is going to be a distinct possibility. So we're going to look at two models. Here's the first one starting to show a few pop up around two o'clock, but kind of keeps the storms heavier into Colleton County, not so much north, especially around Georgetown County. Now this is one weather model. Here's the other one, a little more uh, generous with spreading the love around with those storms, but it keeps the coast completely dry, and that's kind of a theme too. That inland places have a better bet. The coast, yeah, not so much. Now we're going to take a look at your fishing game and your extended day in just a few minutes. But let's get one last update this half hour with our traffic with Trooper Bob. Hey, Bob. Hey, Chris, 26 eastbound. You're going to start seeing brake lights right around University, and you'll be on and off the brakes between University and Ashley Phosphate, but it does get better as you get closer to aviation. Still got that tree down in Charleston County. That's Oak Island Road. That's a roadway that's taking your way out towards Edisto uh, just before Highway 174. DOT has been notified to get that tree out of the roadway. As always, make sure you buckle up. Don't be ejected from life, and let's send it back to Chris for the drive time. All right. Hey, thanks. And yeah, you do see that Somerville to downtown has picked up significantly now sitting at 27 minutes. So traffic getting a little bit of an early start today. Let's hope it doesn't pick up too much more, uh, but 526 in Highway 17. If you're going from West Ashley to Mount Pleasant, they are doing a OK. This ABC News 4 traffic tracker update was sponsored by Mr. Sparky, America's on time electrician. What's well, a job where every second matters, but officials with Charleston County say there's a critical need for dispatchers. For more, we send it over to our Sean Mahoney, who joins us live outside of the 911 call center in North Charleston. Sean, good morning. And just how urgent of a situation has this shortage created? Hey, good morning, Mel. Well, operators inside the 911 call center right behind me wear headsets like these every day, but due to there being 47 vacancies at the call center, a lot of these workers, well, they have to wear these headsets a little bit longer and which has a, a workers with the with the call center saying that it could affect response times in people's uh, most dire situations of needs when they have to call 911. Now, officials with Charleston County say that approximately over a little over three quarters of the calls coming into the center get answered in 15 seconds or less, but the rest may get put on hold until an operator is available. Now, this is because the call center currently only has enough staff to fill the minimum number needed for each shift. Now, it's been so bad. Many employees have had to work 12 and a half hour shifts which employees say burns out some of their coworkers and burns through taxpayers' wallets because a lot of that overtime, $2 million, in fact, comes straight from taxes. Now, to put it in perspective, uh, this time last year, the call center had around 83 people manning the phones. Now they only have 70. They need 117 to be at full staff. But Charleston County, they're trying to change that statistic. They are putting a new wave of social media posts and changing some of the job features to try and entice more people to come in. And that starts today with a new wave of interviews for operators here at the 911 call center starting today, either virtually or in person at their public service building in North Charleston. If you want more details, you can head over to my Twitter page at Sean Mahoney. TV or Facebook at the same handle for more information. Working for you this morning from North Charleston, Sean Mahoney, ABC News 4. All right, Sean, thank you. And officials with Charleston County say the call center received almost 900,000 calls last year. Another shakeup within the Charleston County School District. A spokesman confirms Chief of Staff Erica Taylor is no longer working for the district. We're told that position was eliminated. Taylor had been with the district for nearly 10 years, serving in a strategy and communications role before becoming Chief of Staff. This comes after CCSD announced major changes last week, including the resignation of Chief Academic Officer Carolyn Belcher. The interim title was removed for Superintendent Don Kennedy. He's now serving in a role until a permanent hire is made. CCSD board member Courtney Waters spoke to ABC News 4 about this. It's a lot of change when we're getting ready to hire a new superintendent very shortly. And so I don't think that the board should be standing for this. I don't think we should be condoning this. And I do think we need to do something about it. 
A CCSD spokesperson told us, quote, as Superintendent Kennedy reorganizes the district to achieve the goal of all students reading on grade level by fifth grade in 2027, some employees will be moved and some positions will be changed to accomplish that goal. All right, we talked about it's going to be a hot one today with those afternoon storms, generally speaking, staying away from the coast. So if you want to head to the beach, not too bad. Water temperature 86 degrees. That ri current risk, something to pay attention to, is low. Now, our fishing game forecast, probably the best one of the day. Uh, not the best fishing game forecast, at least, according to the experts. Uh, fair conditions was pretty good early, early this morning, though. Here's your extended forecast for you. So today, one of the hotter days in the forecast. We go back to right around normal, 90, 91 degrees. Notice those rain chances do pick up for the weekend. Saturday, you'll still have plenty of sunshine time. Just afternoon storm will be more significant and then Sunday does look a tad on the wetter side. All right. Well, thanks for joining us on Good Morning Charleston. Good Morning America is next. And now we honor America with our daily pledge brought to you by Miss Kilgore's first grade class at Houston Academy.